You're listening to Plants and Politics with Gina Bonanno Lemos. If you're ready to hear the truth about both sides of the aisle, what's really going on in America, and how big money interests prevent change to keep you sick, broke, and desperate, then play on. Hey guys, welcome to Plants and Politics. This is Gina. So some good news about the case against Monsanto. So on Monday, the first district court of appeals in California upheld a verdict in the case against the GMO and herbicide giant Monsanto, um, which is now Bayer. They were bought out by Bayer. The lawsuit alleged and proved that Monsanto's weed killer caused a man named Dwayne Johnson who had been a school groundskeeper to develop cancer. Mr. Johnson was only 46 when he developed non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. And his case was the first to actually be brought to trial against Monsanto. So thousands of people have filed against them, but not all of the cases have made it to court yet. Um, But all of them allege that the weed killer incited their cancer. The court stated that there was evidence to support the uh, California jury's 2018 decision that Monsanto had acted, this is a quote, Monsanto acted with a conscious disregard for public safety. Although the ruling was upheld, the court did reduce the judgment down to $21.5 million. So that might sound like a lot, but how much is someone's life worth? worth and pain and suffering. So the reduction was due to the fact that the state of California doesn't allow for damages for reduced life expectancy. So they reduced it for that reason. It is a massive reduction though, because the victim had previously been awarded, like the original award was for almost $300 million by jurors. And then it was later reduced by a judge and now it's been reduced again. And to be honest, 21.5 million is like a slap on the wrist for a company that's this wealthy. Because remember, as I said, the Bayer Corporation purchased Monsanto a while back and they were valued at the end of 2019 at approximately $145 billion. So 21.5 million is a drop in the bucket to them. But these people are monsters. So after the court reduced the financial compensation to Mr. Johnson, a man who, remember, was just doing his job when he developed cancer as a result of their unconscionable and reprehensible actions and lies. But even that was too much for Bear. So Bear Corporation, after that announcement and after the court's decision, They put out a statement saying that the reduction was, quote, a step in the right direction. But they believe that the entire verdict should have been thrown out. And they say that they may even appeal his case and take it to the California Supreme Court. So this man has a life-threatening disease. He is not even 50 years old yet. And they're going to try to annihilate him, try to make him spend every last moment of his life in court fighting them when they know they're wrong. Sickening. It's really sickening. Um, It's important to note, too, that, that over $110 million had previously been awarded in two other lawsuits in Northern California, and they are currently also being appealed. And then last month, Bear announced that they plan to settle lawsuits with approximately 125,000 additional people, and the settlement would be nearly $10 billion. So who knows? We'll see if that comes through, if, if they end up doing that. So what's the truth of the matter? The truth is that the original studies that quote-unquote proved the safety of Monsanto's Roundup weed killer were conducted by Monsanto, and our government allowed it. They literally allowed the makers of the product 
to validate the safety of the product, a product from which they stood to earn billions of dollars. What did they think they were going to say? Did the government honestly believe they were going to come clean and say, well, gee, you know, our product damages a person's microbiome and causes the formation of tumors and damage, damages and kills human cells and, you know, it's responsible for nearly every disease known to man. <laughs> of course they're not going to say that. And of course, their studies were only a few months long. They conducted no long-term research to understand the dangers of continued and excessive use of this product. But there have been long-term studies conducted, um, specifically one in particular that caught everyone's attention was conducted by a researcher named Dr. Seralini. And if you're unfamiliar with his work, just Google Seralini rat study and his website will come up with all of the various studies and research that he's done on glyphosate and Roundup in general. But glyphosate is the active ingredient. It's the dan most dangerous. There are other parts of it that are dangerous, but glyphosate is the most dangerous portion that has been tied and, and compound in Roundup that has been tied to the cancer. And there have been books written about this. There are books written about how Monsanto worked with federal regulators to cover up the dangers of the weed killer. So if you haven't heard of it or read it, I highly recommend this book. It's called Altered Genes, Twisted Truth. And it was written by an attorney named Stephen Drucker. What he uncovered by suing them is thousands and thousands of documents that they were trying to keep hidden that proved that they knew that this product was dangerous. But you know, there's so many companies like Monsanto and they spend vast amounts of money and tons of resources. And what they do is they try to discredit anyone who would dare to undermine their profits. So they use all of these companies, they use the same exact playbook. They make these people out to be lunatics and conspiracy theorists. And we've seen this play out time and time again over the years, right? We've seen this with the tobacco industry, with Johnson & Johnson refusing to take responsibility for their baby powder causing cancer, even the makers of opioids. So they lie and they lie until they can't cover it up anymore or until someone internally grows a conscience and then they out them with internal memos and documents and then they literally can't get away with it anymore. For years, there were demonstrations and protests here in the U.S. held against Monsanto, you know, people literally marching in the streets to bring awareness to the dangers of their products and to Monsanto in general and what, what an absolutely abysmal corporation they were. But it wasn't until 2015 that international agencies finally stepped up and then they took responsibility. So for anybody listening who still doesn't know, in 2015, the International Agency for Research on Cancer, IARC, classified glyphosate as a probable carcinogen. So again, that is the active ingredient in Roundup that has been linked most specifically to cancer, but there are other compounds in there. And I, I wrote about this in my book. If you guys don't know of my book, it's called What the Fork? <laughs> the secret cause of disease. Um, and I talk about GMOs and glyphosate and all that good stuff or not so good stuff. So is it a coincidence that a pharmaceutical company would want to own a chemical company? That's the other thing that crosses my mind with this. Why would a pharmaceutical company like Bayer, who makes products that are supposedly to make us healthy, want to buy a chemical company. And we all know why. It's because then they get to double in the deal, right? They can make the products that cause the disease and then, oh, wow, look at that. We have a drug that can cure you. Kind of like the opioid manufacturers were planning to do. You know, as I've said in, in previous podcasts, I get it. I get why people in this country have zero faith in our so-called leaders right? They're supposed to protect us. They're supposed to keep us safe, put our health and welfare ahead of profits. 
but they're not going to do that because these companies fund their campaigns. And I'm talking about politicians on both sides of the aisle. Until we get money out of politics completely for no one, not Democrats, not Republicans, this stuff will not end. And if you believe that one side is better than the other in these matters, then you're simply not paying attention. The only people right now who are not taking money from corporate interests are progressives. I don't care who they are. Establishment Democrats and Republicans alike, they all get their funding from the same places, from corporate interests. So guys, until we get more progressives in office, until we have enough of them to make a difference, to really hold everybody else's feet to the fire and take control of things um, and hold out on some stuff until we get what we want and get money out of this, this ridiculous system that we currently have, it's not going to change. Our, our needs, our desires, our wants, our health, our lives, our livelihood, it's going to play second fiddle to these corporate interests. So, so frustrating. Could have had Bernie. All right, guys. Well, that is that. If I hear any more, I will let you know. In the meantime, like, share, subscribe, ring the bell on YouTube, all that good stuff. And I will talk to you soon. Take care. Thanks for listening to Plants and Politics. The only way we can take our country and power back is to spread the truth and build an army. So remember to like, follow, subscribe, and share on Facebook, YouTube, and wherever you listen to your podcasts. Thanks again.